Today, I'll be answering your questions about family scapegoating abuse, so stick around. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Rebecca Mandeville, psychotherapist, family systems expert, and author of Rejected, Shamed, and Blamed. I have been amiss in answering subscriber questions, and the reason it's taken me a while, well, I'm new to YouTube, I've been here just about six months, and as people were writing into me, I do try to look at all the comments, at least the original comment, the replies can sometimes get lost in the mix. Um, and when I was reading some, not all of the comments it became clear to me that there was seemed to be this belief that uh, scapegoating only happens in narcissistic family systems. While all uh, narcissistic families are dysfunctional, not all dysfunctional families are narcissistic. Uh, many people uh, were confused believing that the field of family systems, which has been around since the late 1950s, was the same thing as the much newer modality, internal family systems. And family systems is its own field. And that's what I specialize in. Um, and that's my passion. That's what I have done for my entire licensed career. A lot of my um, educational efforts the last few months since I first came on here was to try to get some of the foundations of family systems out and share some of the research, not only my own on what I ended up naming family scapegoating abuse or FSA, but also the family systems research that has occurred in this field for over 50 years. My research on FSA was in a way an extension of research on the identified patient, whereby I noticed as a family therapist, some behaviors were so extreme toward the identified patient in the family that it qualified as, in, in my opinion, psycho-emotional abuse. And indeed, other types of abuse might have been going on, including physical and or sexual abuse. I have lots of questions to catch up on. I won't get it all done today, but at least we can get started. So I'm just gonna take these one at a time. Um, and it's my hope I might be doing some live streaming down the road where I can also answer your questions in real time. Um, and so I'll share more about that later once I have time to, to get that foundation laid as well. So the first question I'll be answering is in regard to when um, someone comes into the family and the subscriber wanted to know why the um, new person coming into the family was being told all these stories, what I call the scapegoat narrative about the scapegoated person. And again, this can happen right in front of you if you're the scapegoat in your family. It doesn't always happen in secret. It can happen with someone you brought home to meet your family, uh, maybe someone that you are were thinking of, of marrying and you wanted to have, you know, bring them home and have them meet your family. That can especially happen if you don't understand you're in the scapegoat rule and you know, maybe have some denial going on that you're so excited for them to meet your family because you may then sit in horror or in a freeze state or fawn state while that person, that new person in your life is uh, sat down and the scapegoat narrative, so to speak, is imparted to them. I've heard of um, incidences where it, it can go on for two, three hours and, and the, the person that was, you know, brought home the dates kind of sitting there, doesn't understand quite what's happening and trying to be polite. The scapegoat a person may, might be in a freeze fawn or completely dissociated. It might not even have much recollection of it afterward. You know, this can be very triggering to say the least to hear yourself talked about this way. So the thing to remember about this, why does this happen? is the new person needs to be inoculated into the scapegoat narrative and any 
incidences that the parent, especially a narcissist parent and very much especially a malignant narcissist parent, um, if they know that they've treated you badly or abusively, um, you might spill the beans, get the story out, and they might not look good. So the kind of story that will often come out is uh, what a difficult baby you were, the stressors they were going through, what was maybe really personal information. And you were so difficult and so angry and rebellious. Um, I've had people <laughs> sit there and hear that they were doing drugs and they'd never done a drug in their life. I mean, it can get extreme, as I've mentioned in previous videos. So that's their way of not only covering their tracks, uh, if they know they have been abusive, this can happen with um, especially a covert narcissist parent where it's all about appearances and they never want to look bad or like someone who might have mistreated their child. It, but it can also happen as part of the inoculation with and indoctrination into the scapegoat narrative. So now we're back to what I've talked about in my book and in previous videos. And this is research supported. I posted a paper about this a while back that dysfunctional families, not just narcissistic ones, dysfunctional families, their uh, dynamics mirror the dynamics of a cult, a cult system. So there's the indoctrination of the new member into the power holder of the system. So this would typically be a parent or it could be a dominant sibling that they need to have their reality be the reality and everyone in their sphere needs to be on the Kool-Aid, so to speak, and buying into that reality. So that is how the new person coming in is offered the Kool-Aid. <laughs> Often, as I said, within the first two minutes of them walking into your, your family's home. But what happens if they're not buying into it? I've had clients whose partners have made it clear they're not buying into it. You know, well, you know, Susie's a, a wonderful person. How could you talk that way about your daughter? I'm so confused. I mean, that happens. So, well, now what's what's happening? That new person coming in to this dysfunctional or narcissistic family system is now a, a, a very much a threat. Remember, dysfunctional, including narcissistic family systems, are closed systems. They don't want, the power holders don't want new information coming in that could threaten their power. Any new person coming into the system needs to have the distorted reality ingested. The distorted reality that benefits them as the system power holder, even as it uh, tr does not benefit really anyone in the family system, anyone else, including the golden child. I'll say more about that later. It's benefiting them, but they have the power to put that narrative out. Here's our closed system. Here's an outsider coming in. They're offered the Kool-Aid, the scapegoat narrative, the story of you and how challenging, difficult, defective, mentally ill, you're a liar, whatever, you got in trouble when you were a teen, who knows? They don't buy it. So now what? Well, this answers another subscriber's question. Why is it that an in-law or someone brought into the family can be scapegoated right along with the family member that's in the family scapegoat role? I will tell you nine times out of 10, it's because they somehow showed either they weren't fawning enough or nodding their head enough, um, or they openly challenged this false scapegoat narrative coming out of, again, usually the parent's mouth or it could be a sibling, some other power holding family member. And they're now in trouble right along with you. They are now the enemy, so to speak. They didn't buy this narrative. So now you may find um, that your 
partner, spouse, significant other um, is scapegoated right alongside you. It could even be a roommate. It could be anyone who sees you as being a perfectly wonderful, fine human being. That doesn't match the scapegoat narrative. So uh, you may have family members um, talking badly about people that you care about in your life. And that's why. Nine times out of 10, that will be why. I don't know. I don't live in these people's heads, but clinically and from my research and what I know from the family systems field regarding the identified patient and the research done on that, that's going to be the primary cause. This person didn't buy the false narrative, the scapegoat narrative. They may even have defended you. And now they also are a threat because this is very important. Remember this, whatever the system power holders cannot control, cannot influence, cannot indoctrinate, they must be rejected or slash ejected. Ejected is part of the word rejected. Your threat, exactly like cult dynamics, cult systems. So that's, um, I hope, answering not only these two subscriber questions, but I've had many other people ask me about that. And that's why I started with this particular question.